I, how many me or I? <laughs> I'll take a poetic license bill if you don't mind. And, uh, we, we have been perceived and written about in this uh, venture as an odd couple. Needless to say, uh, the shoe probably fits. But, uh, and I'm sure that there are a lot of people in this room who know, have known Harvard a lot longer than I have, but very few who have spent as much time on the island of Amerigo are in, as the natives call it, Kinja. Uh, it, it's an interesting story because I, I'm going to briefly kind of describe this because people have asked me for years, how in the hell did you and Herman both get together? And uh, I want to take a few minutes to do it and then instead of reading from the book, which I had to read about 650 times according to my professor over here in order to <clears throat> write for character, uh, I thought I'd, I'd revisit my work myself, which, and I'll be all honest, uh, and uh, I, had not, I had not gone and, and looked at these songs for about 10 years until yesterday, and I was alone in my old studio up in Sag Harbor, and, and alone in there, I went, this is pretty good stuff. <laughs> so I had as much fun revisiting Kinja yesterday, and then I decided, well, it's Washington, and it's such a forgiving town. <laughs> Perhaps I'll, uh, I had a good run for two days in Manassas recently, and I figured I'll just, just lay it all out there. So, uh, but before we get there, I just thought I would, I, I, I'd hit a few uh, wonderful kind of memories and, and things that, that I've really not shared with anybody about what it's like to work with Herman Wolk because collaboration, as, as both he and I know, uh, is not something that's really our forte. Or, uh, I know I kind of work alone most of the time and I know Herman does. And the basic fact that uh, when, when I first started, I, I was captured by the magic, first of all, as a reader. And uh, when I read Don't Stop the Carmel, uh, it, just to, to set things in, in, in perspective, I was, I was living on a boat in the Caribbean and, and there was this little hotel off of uh, the southern end of uh, Tortola called Soper's Hole that you'd sail by, you'd go by on a little boat that, that, that took us from St. Thomas over to Tortola and everybody pointed it out as that was the Gull Reef Club. Well, it was not an urban legend, it was a, it was a Caribbean legend, and uh, it was somebody else's folly, but it wasn't the Gull Reef Club. But I was introduced by, to the book on a boat and, uh, and, and loved the characters and loved everything. And, and once, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago, I was working here in Washington at the cellar door for Jack Boyle, and he was such an avid reader of Hermans, and he said, you need to do a musical, and you ought to do Don't Stop the Car. And that's how it simply happened. So my mission kind of... Uh, was to set out in search of Herman Woke, and uh, I thought he was dead. And uh, <laughs> that proved not to be true, as Mr. Twain would say. It was kind of over-exaggerated. And uh, so I sent, I found out that Herman actually was alive, and I sent him a letter, and he sent me a letter back, and he said, who are you? <laughs> so uh, that's the way it started, and, but he agreed to see me, and we, I went to, uh, I went to visit him in Sarah Palm Springs, and uh, we sat under this lucky tree. And uh, I described the, the, the problem I had with this is I read and I loved the book so much that uh, I, uh, I took the uh, fictitious characters and, uh, and the setting and the plot, and, and they affected me so much that I actually bought a hotel on a Caribbean island. <laughs> and uh, as I explained this whole thing to Herman, that my folly was a byproduct of his, his work. He went, you, you don't need me. You've already, you've already got your mistake here. <laughs> so, but anyway, uh, something was in the air, magic or whatever, and, and luck and, uh, and good fortune because he was between projects and, and I, I was kind of between things. And a long story short, we wound up writing this together. A lot of it done in Washington. We actually staged one of the second comings of Carmel. Uh, at the uh, arena stage down on the Potomac River. But I think that it, it was a, a wonderful kind of connection because I, I found out that we were island boys at heart. If you think about it, Herman had uh, gone from Fire Island to St. Thomas to Kinsha, and I'd gone from Key West to St. Bart's to Kinsha. And uh, along the way, it was just such a unique experience. Then I think, you know, I was learning more about how to do this because I'd never done it before and 
let's face it, as, as a shameless entertainer, you make a lot of stuff up. And uh, some of it works, some of it doesn't. But with the, with the man like Herman Woke, I knew some of this stuff was not working. And uh, I had to sit down and I had to tell him, I said, you know, I, I may have bitten off more than I could chew here. I said, you know, I'm not a trained musician. Uh, I've never done a musical. What I did is I went and I rented three videos. I went and rented South Pacific, Black Orpheus, and Fiddler on the Roof. And I watched and I kind of timed it. That's the only kind of, any kind of, <laughs> of scholastic work that I really possessed to write. I'm not sure I can like this musical. And I, I, I was like, in, you know, as a Jesuit also, boy, I felt I was in confession here. You know? <laughs> and he listened patiently. And I thought, man, I don't know how he's going to take this, but i got to tell him, because he always told me to be honest with him. And at the end of it, he just said to me, didn't Irving Berlin only know how to write in B-flat? <laughs> and that, that let me loose. And with Herman's help and with his inspiration, uh, I did this thing. And uh, uh, I saw a dear friend, Ann, uh, out here, and she said, uh, was it ever successful? And I said, you know, financially, no. And that weird cousin of mine, distant cousin, would tell you to take the money out of the equation and see if you're having fun and then do it. And uh, that's what it was. I, I think that the years that I spent meeting, learning from, and enjoying our time together was some of the most valuable time as a writer that I've spent. And uh, in the end, you know, I learned, I learned many things from her. Uh, I learned about Jewish holidays. Not to ever call him after sunset on Friday. <laughs> and uh, I learned that a page a day will give you a wins of war. And, uh, and young writers that, that ask me for my accidental success in writing about it, I always quote, how do you do it? You write a page a day. Uh, and the other thing that I guess I learned from him was that uh, there's a story everywhere and authenticity is really the basis of great fiction. And uh, I thought, well, I'm going to try it out. And again, at the end of, uh, at the end of that run of Carnival, uh, we ran it in Miami to great reviews and audiences. We went to the Bahamas, which was, and again, another episode that we threatened to write a book about the making of Don't Stop the Carnival, because you wouldn't believe this stuff that goes on. But in the end, I, 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 our job was to try to get to the great white way. And we didn't make it, but we were close. And I never told this story, and I think maybe I told it to Herman, but I went to New York once, and there were some producers there that wanted to do it, and I went to this meeting. They'd seen the show and liked it. And they said, yeah, we're all, we're all excited about this. This would be great. But there's one little thing we'd like to bring. And I said, yeah, what's that? They said, well, you know, the music we really like, but the writer, <laughs> and I sat there and I thought, I get it, okay. So they want to fire him. And I thought, this is interesting. So I think I went back to told him, but I just thought, you know, we were partners in this together, and whatever success the great by the way wanted from me was not going to happen without my partner, my friend, and my rabbi. <laughs> and we are still friends today, and we never made it to Broadway, but the carnival is still happening. So uh, I hope you can do it. The fact is, I will tell you that there were many nights when we were auditioning in New York, I would go home early. <laughs>